Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. We got a good one for you today. We've got a little fixed position menu up here. When you click on it, it's going to drop down. Give you some options, you can click on, go to the pages. When you let go, it's going to pop back up there. And this is totally responsive, it'll work on tablet and mobile if I hit my F12 key. Here it is on tablet. Let's have a look at it on the phone. And there we are on the phone. Really easy to do, so let's get started. I'm going to enable the visual build. Once enabled, let's go down and I'll delete that and we'll start from scratch. Okay, the first thing we need to do is actually create the menu that we want to use here. So let's go down to the dashboard, go down to appearance and menus. And let's create a new menu. I want to call mine fixed as it's in fixed position. I'm going to hit the create menu button. Okay, well, as usual, let's just add the pages that we want to add. I'm going to add one page. When you're happy, hit the Add to Menu. And let's just make these more like a real menu. I'm just going to capitalize the first letter of each one of these. So these are just my demo pages that I've been building while we've been building the various things. Yeah, let's just do sections with a capital S. Okay, these are the actual things that are going to appear when the menu drops down. Now, I want something to say that there's more items on the top that you see initially. Of course, like any other menu, you can drag and drop these to where you want, left click and release, make them sub menu items. So I just drag them to the right. If you don't like it, drag it back to the left. Great. So for the top part that's actually going to drop down this here, I'm going to use a custom link. So I'm going to go down to custom links. You've got to put something in the URL, so I'm going to put a hashtag. Now let's give it a title. Whatever you want yours to say, obviously. When you're happy, add it to the menu. Now I'm going to slide this on top, because like I say, this is the thing we're going to see, more options here. Now once it's in your menu structure, you can go in there, get rid of that little hashtag or whatever link you had to put in there. That way, when they click on it, nothing's going to happen. Great. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make all of these sub menu items, dragging them to the right. Great. And when you're happy, hit the save menu. And it says, Fixed has been updated. Great. Well, now we can go back to our page. We're going to have to refresh for us to be able to see that menu. And now let's go down and we'll add a little menu. It doesn't matter where we go. I'll add it below this little image here. And funnily enough, I'm going to use a menu module. There it is right there. I'll move it out of the way. It's put whatever top custom menu is up there. That's the same one I've got at the top, I'm sure. I'm going to select our new menu, which is called Fixed. And there it is. All it says is more options. And we've got a drop down with the things that we put in there. Let's roll this up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to give mine a background color. I don't want it to be full black, but I want it to be fairly dark. Obviously, you choose whatever option works for you. And let's go over to design, layout, left aligned. I want mine left aligned. That's fine, just like that. Drop down menu direction downwards. If you're having it on the top, obviously downwards. You can put it on the bottom and have it go upwards if you want to, but that works for me. Menu text. I'm going to make both the active link and the text, the text itself white in color. I think I'm going to capitalize mine too. Great. Okay, well, they're not quite lined up, and they're a bit wider than I want them to be. So I'm going to add 5 or 10 pixels padding to the left-hand side there. Let's go down to spacing. 
Here's the padding. I want to put it on the left. Let's try five pixels. See what that looks like. Not quite enough. It's going to increment up with the little arrows there. Yeah, let's do one more. Cool. There we go. They're all nicely lined up there. But like I say, it's too wide for me. I don't want it as wide as that. So I'm going to close up spacing. I'm going to go to the sizing just above it. I'm going to take the width down. To guess, I think maybe 150 pixels, 150. It's put in percent, so I'm going to get rid of the percentage. I'm going to put PX for pixels in there. That's about right. Obviously, adjust yours to whatever text you've got in there. But my drop down is too wide. I want it to be same width as the top part there. So we have to do a tiny bit of coding for this today because there's no drop down width option here. Really easy, just a couple of lines though. And I'll put those down below the video as usual. So I'm going to go over to the advanced tab, custom CSS. Let's go down to our drop down menu container. I'm going to give it the same width. I'm just going to write width, colon, 150 bits, 150px, semicolon. That's better. But there's one slight problem. If I hover over, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this on the recording or not. There's an opacity setting when we hover over that's just sticking out of the end here. So to stop that happening, I'm going to say overflow, colon, hidden, semicolon. That way, you won't be able to see that little shadow. Like I say, I'm not sure if you could see that or not. There, you can change colors on this thing if you want to. Here's the drop down menu. Let's make it blue, perhaps. You can put a line color in there if you want to, which is the line, the little purple line there. I think I'll have that the same blue. You can change the text color. I'm going to leave mine as white there. I think I will bold it up a little bit there. So again, I want to go to menu text just above it. I'm going to make, make that bold up. Please. Great, they stand out a lot better there. But of course, I don't want my menu sitting in the middle of my page here. I want it to be at the top of the page at all times. So to do that, I'm going to go over to advanced, I'm going to go down to position. I'm going to change it from the default to fixed. Once I've done that, it's disappeared. You may think, well, where it's gone? It's on the top left hand side. We've got a grid here, but it's under my header there. You can put it in the middle, put it at the bottom, middle bottom. I'm sure you get the idea right in the middle of the page if you want to. I'm going to put mine back in that top corner, but I'm going to bring it down so it's just under our menu there. So the vertical offset, I'm going to slide until we can see it. There it is. I'm going to put it pretty close to the top. And again, you can adjust and fine tune with the little arrows there. I think that works. I'll bring it out from the slot side slightly. Just so it stands out a little bit more, I'm going to give it a bit of box shadow there. There we go. It looks like it's floating on the page a bit more. Let's go back to our position. If you happen to slide down and you find one of your elements is going over the top of this menu, you need to adjust what they call the Z index, which is just below horizontal offset there. Take it up to a nice high number. If you still have a problem, Go into the section or row that's going over the top of it. Set the Z index for the row. Make sure it's a lower number than you've got here. That way it'll fix that issue. Thankfully at the moment, it's all working fine. Now, if you wanted to have this on every single page, you could actually build it into your custom header or custom footer. That way it would appear on every single page. Or of course you can save it to your library by hitting the little round circle item there, give it a name, save it to the library, and just paste it on your pages. Great, well if we've done everything correctly now, this should work. Let's save our changes, little purple button, 
save draft or publish if you're ready and exit the visual builder and there we have it when we hover over we've got our little drop down there nice little horizontal menu and it's going to work on all devices let's have a look on an ipad and an iphone here we are on the iphone one little thing i didn't mention you can color the hamburger menu whatever color you want there let's have a look on ipad perfect great well let's get back out of here and i'll go down enable the visual build again change the color of the hamburger menu let's go back in there I'll roll that up so it's out of the way i'm going to flip it to ipad view or tablet view little purple button hit the tablet icon there let's go on a tablet view we can see our little hamburger there and over in design if we go down to icons roll down a bit You've got your hamburger menu right there. You can change the size of it right here. And you can change the color of it just up above. Great. And we'll save our changes. Just going to go back to desktop mode. Because this is in fixed position, sometimes you may have trouble getting to it. I can just roll up and get to mine this way. But if you do have trouble, what you can do is make sure your little purple button's expanded down the bottom there. Go over the left hand side. Hit the little icon over here it'll take you to a wireframe view which is sort of back end view and there's our little menu right there you can get to it that way great so we should be good to go let's save our draft once more and exit the visual builder and there we are again there's our little vertical menu drop down here we are on the iPad, as you can see, the hamburgers changed to white there. And it'll be the same on an iPhone. There we go. There you go, guys. There's how to create a fixed position, drop down, vertical menu for your Divi site. In a few simple steps, really easy. Two lines of code there, and you'll find those both below this video. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignDetectives.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.